Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. The new Blue Eddy EB3A is the smallest UPS power station to date to grace the halls of the Hobotech Secret Lab. At only 268 watt hours, it packs a big 600 watt inverter and can charge, get this, in under one hour. That also makes it the fastest charging microgenerator on the market today. But is it any good? Let's find out. Inside this cute little box is a 268 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery rated at 2,500 cycles to 80% capacity. As for size and weight, this is a measly 10 inches by seven by seven at only 10 pounds. Now this Blue Eddy is plastic fantastic just like the rest. It does have rubberized feet on the bottom and a flush folding handle on the top to make a nice smooth surface. As for the display, this does have a color TFT with battery percent, state of charge, plus input and output wattage, as well as icons for various warnings and different modes. It also does offer a countdown timer for charge and discharge times. As for the inverter, the EB3A sports a 600 watt pure sign inverter with a 1200 watt surge capacity. That's through a pair of 15 amp outlets. However, new for Blue Eddy is a feature they call power lifting mode. While it has nothing to do with working out at the gym, we have seen this feature before in other products like EcoFlow and other brands that allow you to run resistive loads like a heater at higher than the 600 watt capacity. So this feature works by lowering the voltage while raising the amps. So the product that you're trying to power thinks it's getting the amps it needs when in fact you're lowering the voltage. So you're not really ever pulling more than 600 watts. The inverter is doing a little trick. As for ways to charge, there are three. First, of course, is by AC wall power using just this cord. There is no power brick for this, unlike other small Blue Eddies. This plugs directly in to the front of the unit, and then you just plug it into the wall. The charger is actually built in. Inside the app, there are three different charging modes available. The default is standard, where it will charge from the wall at 268 watts max, or 1C. Silent mode will actually charge even slower, but not run the fans. So if you're trying to charge this in a room where you don't want noise, you can put it in silent mode. Turbo mode, which is my favorite, will actually charge at a whopping 400 watts. Now it does say on the website 350 watts, but I'll show you here in a little bit, it actually pumps 400 watts into the battery. For a tiny 260 watt battery to pump 400 watts into it is pretty incredible. In turbo mode, this little Blue Eddy will charge from zero to 80% in just 40 minutes. A full charge takes somewhere around 75 minutes. And in standard mode, which is the default, it will charge from dead to full in about two hours. Now, the second way to charge is with solar at up to 200 watts. So the EB3A does support 200 watt solar from 12 to 28 volts. Under perfect sky conditions with a 200 watt panel, you could expect to charge this from dead to full in somewhere around two to two and a half hours. This will also charge from 12 or 24 volt vehicle. Now, if you plug it into a 12 volt source, it'll take about four hours to charge it from dead to full, which actually isn't too bad. And it'll take about half that time if you're charging it from a 24 volt source. And yes, if you have a 24 volt battery, you can charge it directly through the solar port. Now this little Blue Eddy does in fact support dual charging. So you can charge it from solar and AC at the same time, or actually two AC sources if you would plug a third party charger or one of Blue Eddy's chargers into the solar input. Now this will allow you to charge the EB3A at 430 watts. Now that is a hard cap. It won't allow you to exceed that under any condition. Now, please note, in order to keep the price competitive on the EB3A, Blue Eddy decided to not include a 12 volt charging cable or a solar charging cable. If you need one of those cables, you can just add them at checkout. If you already own an, another Blue Eddy that has those cables, they are definitely backwards compatible. As long as it's an eight millimeter, it'll fit in here just fine. 
So if you've got an older Blue Eddy, you can reuse those cables. You don't have to buy them again. As for 12 volt outputs on this, this does have three. It has a single 10 amp cigarette lighter socket regulated at 13.3 volts. And it also does offer a pair of 5521 barrel plug outputs. Now, all three of these outputs combined are rated at 10 amps or about 120 watts. This unit does offer three USB outputs. A pair of standard USB outputs from the Cretaceous period, good for charging up your dinosaurs. And a high powered 100 watt USB-C output, good for charging high-end devices such as a MacBook Pro or other laptops. It's not really clear to me why Blue Eddy opted to not include USB quick charging, but they do offer on the top here a 15 watt wireless charging pad, which will work with your modern cell phone. Finally, this does have a built-in flashlight, which of course we will test here in a bit. Luetti does offer a 24-month limited manufacturer's warranty on this product when you purchase it directly from Bluetti. So of course we took the EB3A here into my secret laboratory where we performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including, yes, of course, since we skipped that on the last few videos, you guys are gonna get in this video. Let's all do it together now a double-fisted battery capacity test. Results of the DC battery capacity test, the unit scored 210 watt hours out of 268, or 78%. Again, the regulation circuitry is taking a big bite out of the available capacity. Since the EB3A uses a 24 volt battery internally, there was really no way of getting around and not using regulation circuitry to power your 12 volt devices. Note that my first result before I updated the firmware on this, I got pretty bad results. So that can be affected by firmware updates. Now that means this result may improve over time with future firmware updates. As for the results of the AC battery capacity test, it scored 230 watt hours out of 268 or a much more respectable 86%. Now you have to assume the bottom 10% of the battery is reserved to protect battery damage. And then the other 4% is just gonna be power loss to the inverter running. So that makes this a pretty average result for a Blue Eddy. Pure sine wave check under load. I have this heater running. As you can see, it's holding 120 volts, 60 hertz. Pure sine wave. All right, now let's do the inverter capacity test to see how much we can push out of this 600 watt inverter. Now there are two settings in the app, power lifting being disabled or enabled. We're gonna start with it disabled, meaning this should act just like a regular 600 watt inverter. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the heat on low, which is just about 600 watts. We'll see what happens. Yeah, right at 600 watts, it conks out. So let's try something with a little less load. And you know what that means. Dun, dun, dun! The solar degenerator. Now we're watching right here for our AC output. All right, six and a quarter. And as soon as we get about 6.30, it conks out. Now that's expected. Now let's go into the app and turn on power lifting. Gives you a warning that uh, you're not supposed to run air conditioners and stuff on it. Okay, now I have that power lifting feature turned on. Now let's see how much more we can crank out of it. Now you can see the sine wave is starting to distort because the power station is purposely modulating the voltage. Now watch as I turn the heat up, watch the voltage drop, the sine wave gets totally annihilated and we're now below 100 volts. Now I have the solar degenerator all the way up right now. This is an 1800 watt device and it's still running, but 268 watts and it's at 53 volts. So what does this mean? Well, it means this works just like other EcoFlow products and other brands that now use this feature. They bring the voltage down to allow you to run higher wattage appliances. Now, there's no black magic to this. 
you're still only getting 600 watts out of the inverter, but what they do is they bring the voltage down so the amps could climb because voltage and amps trade off to equal watts. That's voltage times amps equals watts. So you can change the volts or change the amps and still have the same watts. So that's what's happening here. Now you can see why you're not supposed to run something like a refrigerator or air conditioner or something with a computer chip with this mode turned on because it could totally destroy that device. That messed up sine wave plus the low voltage could absolutely destroy a microprocessor or mess up a compressor or an electric motor. Now, this product is fine if you want to run an electric heater. In fact, let's see what happens with this feature on if I crank this heater, this 1600 watt heater, all the way up. Now, it's still stopping at 600 watts and that heater is working. I have it on full blast. It's a 1600 watt heater. It shouldn't be working at all. You can see there it's dropping the voltage. It's below 90 volts. So I can hear the fan on the heater running really slow. And it is giving off heat. It's giving out a pretty good amount of heat, but the fan is blowing so slow, there's barely any air coming out. It could get you out of a sticky situation for running an electric cooktop or something like that that would be way above 600 watts. But is it something you're really going to want to use that often? So I would recommend if you're not really going to need that feature, just shut it off and play it safe. It is off by default. So this next test is the heat capacity test, or what I call the heat soak test, where I'll run it at its rated capacity, which is 600 watts, for at least five minutes. Make sure it doesn't overheat, shut down, throw any alarms, start smoking, drinking, doing drugs, you know, the kind of stuff that young teenagers sometimes do. So let's go ahead and push this and see what happens. All right, there it is running 600 watts. Let's start the timer. All right, there you have it. It's running five minutes at 609 watts. No problem. Okay, inverter noise while it's running on maximum. It's really quiet. I don't know, this is not gonna register much, but let's see. Less than 44 decibels. It is, that fan is super quiet. I find it hard to believe. I was just running 600 watts for five minutes and barely audible. It's really, really impressive. And this is the temperature of the air coming out of the exhaust. It's actually quite acceptable. Max charge rate test. Now it says the solar input on this is limited to 200 watts from 12 volts to 28 volts. So I have it actually set to 29 volts, which seems to be the maximum. It's right there it says PV 199. So yeah, it just, it stops right at 200 watts. I now have it set to 13 volts, which would be 12 volts from a vehicle and it's charging at 96 watts. This is typical for all Blue Eddy products. They pretty much all kind of cap around 8.2 amps, or in this case, 100 watts of charging. Now, because the battery in this is so small, even 100 watts from your cigarette lighter will completely charge this in three to four hours. So unlike a lot of other solar generators where it'll be 12, 30, 50 hours to charge from a car, you can do this in a pretty, decently short trip, three to four hours. Now I went to the app and I put charging mode on turbo, which allows this to charge it up to 400 watts from AC wall power. So right now I have it turned on and it is charging at 392. I've seen it top at 400. It says in the book 350. It says on the website 350, but when I was charging this from zero, it was holding 400 watts for quite a while. Now it's doing 388, 390. So it's more than what it says on the website from AC wall. Now this does support dual charging, so you can charge it with solar and AC at the same time. So let's see what the maximum capacity of that is. So here's the grid power, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my fake solar. Oh, there we are, 430 watts, which is the absolute maximum that this will allow you to charge from dual sources. It actually prioritizes solar over grid, so what it did was it brought the grid side down to allow the solar to max out, and this is designed to save you money. And that is gonna make it smoking fast. That's gonna charge this thing in less than one hour. That's dead to full. There's no product out on the market that I'm aware of that will charge from zero to 100% in less than an hour. Now this will definitely charge from zero to 80% in just 40 minutes, which again, I haven't seen anything on the market that fast. I'm sure somebody in the comments is gonna be, now EcoFlow can charge at like 500 million watts. 
Now the EB3A does offer a rudimentary UPS mode, meaning there's no programming or nothing involved, it's just on. So when you plug this into AC wall power, you'll see on the screen it says UPS. And as soon as you turn the inverter on, now all loads are being powered from your wall power, not from the battery, so it's bypassing the battery. Now it's still gonna charge the battery. If you're plugged into the wall and it's not fully charged, it will top the battery off, but loads are actually being run through the wall power. And this will support appliances up to 600 watts in UPS mode. But there you go, this is, I think, the smallest on the market that actually has a real UPS relay. Whenever you turn the inverter on, you'll hear the click. That's a true UPS relay. So, tiny, tiny little box, but I could see this being used for computers. So if you have a personal computer at home, as long as it's less than 600 watts, this will allow you to run it off of grid power, not touch the battery, and then if the power goes out, continue to run. I can think of a lot of uses for something this small and this cheap with a UPS feature built in. So double thumbs up to Blue Eddy for putting something like that in such a small and expensive product. DC output check, this does support 10 amps, at 12 volts. Now this is a regulated output on this. It's actually regulated at 13.3 volts. USB output rate check. Now this just has two dummy dinosaur USB-A ports on it. I don't bother testing those, those always work. But this does offer a single output only 100 watt power delivery. It's not bi-directional. You cannot charge this with USB, but you can send up to 100 watts out to laptop you know, like a MacBook Pro or whatever. A lot of high-end devices nowadays have power delivery, and this power bin here, this little power bin brick, actually supports 200 watts of USB charging, so 100 watts in each. So right now I do have it cranking at 100 watts from the Blue Eddy. You can see right here it says 93 watts. There's always a few watts of loss due to heat and stuff, but 94 watts says right there. Now how about wireless charging? This does have a wireless charging pad on the top. now. This phone, just old Android phone, doesn't have wireless charging, but I do have a pad that I can hook up through USB-C. It does allow up to 10 watts of charging through a wireless pad. So all you have to do to get this to work is make sure you turn on the DC. So DC is currently on, and then you just set your phone on the top. If you hear a ding coming from my phone, that means it's wirelessly charging. So let's see. Now, what about powering down after a certain number of hours? Now, a lot of people have issues with some of these smaller solar generators shutting off on them whenever they're running a refrigerator or something that's pulling a really small load. This has what's called eco mode. Now, pretty much all Blue Eddies, I can't think of any Blue Eddy made in the last two years that doesn't have this mode, but this is actually supported through the app. So while you can turn it off by pressing certain buttons on the Blue Eddy itself, it tells you in the manual how to do that. You go right into the app, flick eco mode on if you want it on, and then you can actually change how many hours you want it to wait to power off. And, and their choices are one, two, three, or four. I always leave eco mode off because I want my stuff to stay on all the time, and you probably do too, but if you're one of those people who forget to turn it off and then you come back to a dead battery, eco mode is there to save you. Musician's favorite, the amp interference test. Will this tiny little inverter in this tiny little box be clean enough to run a power amp? Now, I doubt it, but I've been surprised before in the past. I haven't tried this yet. Is it gonna be clean and get a thumbs up or is it gonna be dirty? Okay, so here's the result. It is noisy and that's not a surprise. It's not really bad, but it is noisy. Now I've had a bunch of folks in the past year that I've been doing this amp interference test tell me, hey, if you put a ferrite core on that cable, it'll get rid of the hum. Now I didn't think it was gonna do anything, so I went and I bought a giant bag of assorted ferrite cores. These are designed to remove interference from power lines basically, or audio lines. So I got the right size, I put it on this cord. It makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. You can hear right there, it's making the same buzz. So the ferrite core in this case does absolutely nothing. So I just wanted to throw that in there for everybody who's saying, I've been doing this test wrong the whole time. Now there is one last feature on the EV3A that I have not yet tested. And that is of course the most important feature 
any solar generator could have, and that's the flashlight. So, let's see. Does this have the SOS like all the others? So first press is usually low, then it goes to high, then it goes to SOS, so let's see. Okay, there's low, there's high, and is it gonna be time to flag down our little buddies upstairs? Three, two, one, start the music. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Flag down those little guys upstairs. Howdy ho. Howdy ho, good neighbor. Good to see you guys. Oh yeah, we're rocking out down here on planet Earth. We're screwing everything up down here. Come on down. I told you guys that as long as they keep putting this silly SOS in there, I'm gonna keep making fun of it. So I have a feeling we're gonna be doing the alien bit for quite a long time. Now, what don't I like about the Blue Eddy EB3A? The lack of USB quick charge ports is mind boggling to me. I understand they're making a budget product here in a very competitive segment, but how much extra could it really cost to just include some quick charging in here along with the 100 watt power delivery port? And yeah, bi-directional power delivery charging would have been a great addition as well. But who knows, maybe they'll have a EB3B or a C3PO or an R2D2 in the future where those features will be included for a few extra bucks. Now, one of the other things that annoys the crap out of me is the screen shutting off too fast. I'm not gonna tell you how many times I had to push this button while recording. I like to have the screen on to see what I'm doing. And even when I'm using it, the screen powers off. Now, I hope they can just add something to the app to allow the user to have the option to turn the screen on or off it'd be a very easy firmware update to implement this feature. Now my last gripe, I'm really not a fan of having this AC input on the front because you got this big honking cable on the front. It's gonna be in your way, you're charging. Now I'm thinking what they should have done was they should have taken this input along with the circuit breaker and just stuck it on the back and then it could have added a third outlet. That would have been a nice design. I mean, this isn't a deal breaker by any means, but it's just an annoyance. So what do I like about the EB3A? I do have to say I am wild at the amount of cool features they packed into this little box at this price point. I'm truly impressed that Blue Eddy just totally owned EcoFlow at their own game. Not only have they ditched that loud wall charging brick, but they smoke the competition with the fastest charging rates of any micro generator on the market. That turbo mode is great and dual charging even faster. The EcoFlow River fans scream for mommy anytime you're charging that at its max rate. And 200 watts of solar charging is no slouch either, but it's not record breaking and it's not much better than the competition. But did I mention that this has a 2500 cycle battery compared to 500 cycles for the EcoFlow? And this is actually cheaper, enough said. The built-in 600 watt UPS at this size is just amazing. I could use a dozen of these all over my property for plugging in all kinds of stuff I wanna keep on if the lights go out. And Blue Eddy's app, unlike the competition, doesn't require the user to sign up, sign their life away, or violate their privacy. You can completely control this over Bluetooth without ever having to sign up on Blue Eddy or being on the internet whatsoever. Of course, you can sign up if you want more features and stuff like that, but it's an option and not a requirement. I like that. So while the power lifting mode is more of a novelty feature, it does actually work. You saw me run an 1800 watt heat gun and a 1600 watt electric heater on max settings. Did it work great? No, not really, but it worked. If you really needed to brew a cup of coffee or run that hot plate and it was more than 600 watts, this will still probably do it. Product price. Well, this unit launches January 14th, 7 p.m. Pacific time, that's 2022, at the introductory price of only $249. This is a heck of a lot of bang for the buck. Now, Blue Eddy did give us an exclusive Hobo Tech code that knocks a few more bucks off. Now, what about the competition? Blue Eddy is going right at the throat of the EcoFlow River with this product. 
The EB3A has a superior battery, so it uses a 2500 cycle LFP, where the River uses NMC, good for 500 cycles. The Bluetti also charges faster, takes the same 200 watts of solar, it's 30 bucks cheaper. Good night, EcoFlow. This is focused towards portable power needs, such as camping, RVing, powering small appliances when there's no AC power available or during a blackout, something like that. This would also be great for running a 12 volt compressor fridge since it does have regulated output. There is enough juice in here to run the average 12 volt compressor fridge for a full 24 hours. And if you're a CPAP user, this is also great because it does offer those 5.5 millimeter outputs of the 12 volt port, which can run many CPAP machines. And for a CPAP user, you can easily make it a couple nights on this as long as you turn off your humidifier. As for recommended solar, I recommend a 200 watt solar panel for this unit. Now you can either get Blue Eddy's own PV200 panel, or if you want something cheaper, you can get it off my website, hobotech.tv, which of course I have the link below in the description. You can pick up something like the Renogy 175 watt flex panel, or if you want a glass panel, there's the 200 watt Bouge RV. So if you're interested in the Blue Eddy EB3A, the link and code is in the description below of this video. I'm also gonna put it at the bottom of the screen here with a QR code that you can scan with your mobile device. It'll take you directly to Blue Eddy's website. Now remember this product launches at 7 p.m. Pacific on June 14th. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. I just want to let everyone know that we're going to be doing a live stream on July 2nd, 2022 for World UFO Day. So bring your SOGENs with the SOS light feature. We'll all go ahead at the same time and point them up into the heavens and see what happens. Now this event is being hosted on Facebook. I will put a link in the description of this video. RV Golf Guy, Andrew Von Rock, Brian Lieber, John Stacey Soroka, Dr. Steve Eisenhower.